Good morning, 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 everybody. I hope everybody's day is off to a great start. I'm thankful to be in the land of the living this morning. I'm thankful to be amongst the living this morning. I'm thankful that God woke me up this morning and gave me another chance. So for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Grace Amber. I come on different platforms whenever God gives me a word to share. I come on and I share it with you. So really quick this morning, happy Thursday. Thank God it's almost Friday. Happy Thursday, y'all. I want to talk to you really, really quick this morning from the topic of a moment in time, a moment in time. What am I talking about today? Let's jump in. So this summer, um, I took my daughter to um, took my daughter someplace where they had, you know, like like water rides and 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 a water water park and you know, pools. So while I was sitting um, by the pool, I met this lady, very pretty lady, uh, and and she was telling me um, her kids were playing in the water and I was just sitting there watching and she was watching her kids and she was telling me about how uh, she was going through a divorce and she, uh, her, her still husband, she walked in on him cheating on her. And I was listening to this lady and she was just, it was like she was stuck in that moment. It was like, you know, she started crying. Um, and so she was just, you know, just talking about all the bad. Uh, here's the deal. Trauma happens to everybody, and bad things happen to everybody, right? And so I'm not minimizing what happened uh, to that lady or her situation. But one thing I noticed, and this is what we do as humans, we get stuck in a moment in time. And so I want to talk about that today. Uh, because, listen, we all go through trauma. We all go through things that are hurtful. We all have traumatic things that happen in our life. You know, for you, um, it could have been a car accident. You know, uh, for somebody else, it could have been witnessing somebody get unalived. Uh, whatever your situation is, everybody is different. You know, when I was a kid, a, a big tree limb fell on me. Um, I don't know how God has just spared me all through these years. Huge tree limb um, fell on me in the middle of a storm. Got in several car accidents. Uh, I got a scar on my head. Um, where I was at a church, my dad is a retired pastor. And so I was at a church one time, uh, and a girl was walking in in front of me and they had the swinging glass doors. Uh, and so what happened is my hand somehow, <laughs> these are freak accidents, my hand and my head somehow went through the glass door because she didn't hold the door for me. And I have a scar here and a, a scar on my elbow. You know, everybody has these things that happen to them. Life is not going to be a walk in the park for a believer or uh, the saint or the sinner or the non-believer or the atheist. You know, it, it, life, things are going to happen. Bad things are going to happen. And, you know, uh, clinical term, traumatic things are going to happen in life, right? I want to give you a scripture, Ecclesiastes, third chapter. I'm going to read the second through the eighth verses. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. So there's going to be those times. You're going to have a time where you can laugh and it's going to be times where you're going to cry. You're going to have times where you're going to love and it's going to be times where you're going to feel hate, right? It's going to happen. It's inevitable for anybody. These things are going to happen. And when traumatic things happen, we should process them. We should grieve when death happens. That is the appropriate response. Because if you don't, you're just going to hold those things in and eventually they're going to rise to the surface again, right? So we should mourn. We should cry. We should talk about it when traumatic things happen, right? What does that do? This is how you resolve trauma. When bad things happen or traumatic things happen, you need to talk about it. You need to cry because it's therapeutic. You need to speak on it. You need to, if you want to go talk to a therapist, if, that, if you don't have anybody who you can trust, go talk to a therapist. You need to process trauma this is how you resolve trauma, right? But here's the problem is that sometimes we get stuck in the stage of processing trauma, right? We get stuck in that process. We process it and try to resolve it for so long that we allow it 
to become our new norm instead of allowing it to just be a moment in time. So we then transition from processing trauma to moving into unresolved trauma because when traumatic things happen, many of us get stuck in that moment of time. And here's what I have noticed about life, and I'm sure we all have if you sit back and look. Life goes on. Your pet dies, guess what? The world ain't going to stop. The moment they die, it's going to keep right on going. Life goes on. A loved one dies. You know, we all have had loved ones that die, so I ain't being cold. I ain't being callous. I'm stating facts today because that's what we want to go on. We want to go on facts. We don't want to get so caught up in our feelings, right, that we just run them up. We want to stay talking about facts today. The truth is life goes on. When you lose, lo lose loved ones, life goes on. When you lose your vehicle, life goes on. When a storm comes, you know, I remember when, uh, uh, what was that? Uh, what was that hurricane in Florence? Well, guess what? Florence was horrible. We were without lights, electricity for days at a time, right? Stuck in the house eating tuna, trying to trying to live off a of tuna for days and, and trying to warm up the grill <laughs> to sometimes warm up coffee and food. Guess what? Do you think the world stopped and life stopped because the hurricane came and our power was out? No, it didn't. Life goes on. And so when traumatic things happen to us, what we tend to do unknowingly to us is that we get stuck in that moment of time while life is going on. We get stuck trying to figure it out. You know, why did they do this to me? Why did this happen? Waiting on an apology from somebody else that we may never get. Uh, waiting on somebody to right a wrong that they did. We stuck in a moment of time. Meanwhile, life just going right on passing us right on by. But we stuck in that moment of time. Licking our wounds is what we tend to do as humans. And there's a time for that. There's a time to lick your wounds. And then it's a time to get up and start moving on with the life that's going on anyway. Because it ain't going to stop because of your trauma or whatever happened to you. It's going to continue to go on. God never designed for us to get stuck in a moment in time with something traumatic that happened in our life. God designed for us to process that thing. And move on with life because life does not stop, right? And many times another thing that we do is we enjoy sympathy from others so much that we allow ourselves to be stuck in that time. Not because we can't move on, not because we can't process it, resolve it, and move on, but because we just enjoy the sympathy and the pity from other people. So we allow a traumatic event that was happened in one moment in time in our lives. All the other time in life and our life that we had, we just forget about those things and focus on that one traumatic event that happened in that one moment in time. And we get stuck in something that we could have resolved. It could have been resolved trauma, but because we choose not to resolve it. We choose to stay stuck in that moment of time. It then goes from resolved trauma to unresolved trauma. Here's the truth about traumatic situations, traumatic experiences, betrayals, um, you know, bad things. That's what we're going to call it, what a lot of people call it, bad things. Here's the truth about the bad things that have happened to us all is that sometimes we may never get the acknowledgement that we deserve. Sometimes the people who were involved are going to continue to gaslight us and act like they never did what they did. They're going to minimize it, act like it didn't happen. Sometimes make it seem like it's our fault. The truth is we may never get the acknowledgement that we deserve. We may never get the apology that we deserve. They may never right their wrong, right? So in the, in the example that I gave earlier, this lady walked in on her husband cheating on her. And now they're going through this long, drawn-out divorce. Well, he may never come back and say, look, I'm sorry, let's work this thing out. He may never say, I apologize, I was wrong for doing that. He may never do that. Now, we have to make a choice. We may never get the desirable outcome in certain traumatic situations. When we lose loved ones, I don't know any of us that want to lose a loved one. And I'm going to be honest, I don't know any of us who have lost a loved one who would not like to have them back again. But here's the deal. We are not in control of those kinds of things. If we were in control, they would have never left us to begin with, right? So we may never get the desirable outcomes that we want in those situations, but we have to make a choice. Healing is a choice. We have to make a choice that we are not going to allow ourselves to be stuck in a time capsule in a moment of time of something that traumatic, something traumatic that happened in our lives. We have to make a choice to resolve it, 
to heal and to move forward with the life that's going on right ahead, right in front of us. It's going right in front of your very eyes. We have to make a choice to continue to move forward. And here's the deal. In every situation, no matter how traumatic that it was, there is some good in that situation. You might have lost a loved one, but guess what? You got closer to God. Well, well listen, we love our loved ones, right? That's why we call them loved ones. But my goodness, what good is a loved one? What good is it for a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? There's a good in everything. So if we lost somebody that we love, but it brought us closer to God, I count it a gain instead of a loss, right? So we have to look for the good in everything. This lady walked in on her husband cheating on her, but guess what? Now she got away from that buster and that sucker, and now what she chooses healing, and she goes along for long enough in her life, guess what? She's going to get the love that she deserves. There's a good in every situation, but we have to look for the good. Healing is a choice. We have to choose to find the good in every traumatic circumstance and focus on those things. Philippians 4, 8 through 9. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. We have to search for the good in every circumstance. Every traumatic circumstance, there is something good in that. And Romans 8, 28 tells us that God will take it and work it for our good if we trust in him and if we love him, we believe in him, we're called by him, right? He is going to take every traumatic situation and work it for our good. We have to choose healing and we have to choose to find the good. And then when we find the good, we have to choose to focus on the good. When we shift our focus from bad to good, then and there will we find the strength to move forward. Philippians 3, 13 through 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the high prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We have to make a choice to hold fast to the good, to forget those things that are behind us, to not focus on those things that hurt us, but to find the good, focus on the good, and reach forth unto the good things that lie ahead that God has in store for us in our life. Trauma was just a moment in time. Your whole life was not trauma. We just had a moment in time where we experienced some trauma. And so God wants what God wants for us to do is to process that trauma, right? And then move forward. He does not anticipate and then plan for us and expect for us to sit there and stay in a time capsule from something traumatic that just happened in one moment in time. Oh, we had we all had good times in our life, just like we had bad times. We had good times and we have to choose to be healed. We have to choose healing. We have to choose to move forward. We have to choose to resolve the trauma that happened in our life so that we can press forward towards the high calling of God, so that we can press forward to the good that God has for us. We have to choose healing and we have to choose to press forward in our life. I love you. I hope that word blessed you today. Happy Thursday. I am Grace Amber. I'll be right back on tomorrow with another word. Good Lord willing.